One of the biggest components of passing your NREMT is understanding signs and symptoms of the NREMT. In this video right here, I'm pulling out the whiteboard. We're talking about three major signs and symptoms you gotta know. Hey, it's Evan, the paramedic coach. Now, you gotta stay to the end of this video. It's super important. I'm gonna be going through an NREMT style question and we're gonna tackle it together. Let's tackle our signs and symptoms. Here we go. Now, let's start with cardiac tamponade. Remember that cardiac tamponade is putting a tremendous amount of pressure on the heart. That sac that is around the heart is being Filled. It's being pressurized. And what's happening is the heart is suffering due to that. So what happens? The heart fails as a pump because it's being squeezed due to cardiac tamponade. Right. So what do we think the effect would be? Okay, well, if the heart fails the pump and there's pressure around it, what would we ex expect? Well, if we understand heart blood flow, if we have heart failure, blood backs up, right? So what that means is we'd get back up in the venous. Well, here's JVD. Okay, that's one of, we have a Beck's triad right here that explains cardiac tamponade. Okay, what else? Well, if my heart fails the pump, I'm gonna get hypotension. If my heart fails the pump and it's being pressurized, being squeezed, I'll probably have muffled heart sounds. So muffled heart sounds, JVD, and hypotension is Beck's triad. I guarantee you on NREMT, you'll have a scenario like this. That was number one. Let's move into the next one. Our second NREMT sign symptom we gotta know is what happens when we have increased intracranial pressure, increased ICP. What that is is a triad called Cushing's triad. Now, here's the big key. Why would we have increased intracranial pressure? Could be head trauma, could be stroke. We talk about brain hemorrhage, brain bleeds, all that, right? That makes sense? Right, now, the big, key here that you got to know. We're going to start with the first one. You can see right here. We talk about rising blood pressures when we have an increase in intracranial pressure, okay? The big key is that the systolic blood pressure goes basically and shoots up. What that causes is the number one piece of Cushing's triad is that hypertension, yes, but that whining pulse pressure between the systolic and the diastolic blood pressure. So it's high blood pressure and a wide pulse pressure because the systolic is going to the roof. Okay, that's in points. So that's the first key. Increase ICP, hypertension. Second piece is bradycardia. The final piece is irregular, slow respirations. Could lead to apnea, sure but it's gonna be irregular, slow respirations. Now, can I give you a pearl here? Here's the pearl. This right here, you can see Cushing's triad, what happens when we get increased intracranial pressure? What happens? We get hypertension, bradycardia, and then slow respirations. Now, the way you can remember Cushing's triad is it is the opposite of a shock patient. So a shock patient, initially, what's gonna happen? Tachycardia, hypotension, increased respirations, exactly. This is the opposite. It could be a way for you to remember both by locking these in. Let's go on to the next one. Now our third piece is a wheezing patient. I always tell my students, when you hear a wheeze, 
think. A, A, C. The first A is for asthma. Second, anaphylaxis. Third, COPD. Remember that asthma is all wheeze, okay? But remember a few pearls here. Let's go through them. Asthma. That's going to be your main wheezing patient. Commonly, that patient with asthma, like all these, happens acutely when they're going to call 911. The big key with anaphylaxis is, remember, it's two or more body systems. And also, anaphylaxis can have strider and wheezing, nausea, vomiting, hives, some big keys there. Now, the final piece, COPD, has chronic bronchitis and emphysema. These patients are very commonly on long-term steroids. That might be in the question as well. Something to think about there is you also with this patient with COPD, they might be on oxygen when you actually show up on the call. They might be on home oxygen. A few quick tips there. Now let's dive into our NREMT style question. Here we go. Welcome to the bonus section. You made it. Give me a hashtag bonus down below. If you made it to the bonus section, going over an NREMT style question. Here we go. Now, you have a patient that is a 42 year old female patient found in care of PD, the police department, the officers on scene at a local bar. The patient is confused, altered mental status, tachycardic, so a high heart rate and has bulging eyes. You should suspect, what do you think it is? Is it a psychiatric crisis, a cocaine overdose, an opiate overdose, or Graves disease? What is going on in your mind with this patient? So let's talk about the first thing, okay? What do we actually have as the information from this question? Notice, we have no vitals, so we can't go off that. We don't have a blood sugar, so we can't go off that, okay? It appears in this question, we have just arrived on scene and we've gotten, what have we gotten? A baseline of the mental status. We've gotten essentially a, a pulse or heart rate, okay? Just tachycardic, we know it's high, and we can see the patients. Okay, so we can see that patient has bulging eyes. We got from the officers how old the patient is, okay, and we know where the patient is found, okay, and we know the patient is not obeying commands, okay. So, based on this information, where does this look to? Now, here's the big question, and this is what I always say to my students. Now, my friends, this question is not trying to trick you. Remember, the NREMT is trying to see if you are competent in this area. So here it is. Let's break these down. Now, a cocaine overdose, what would that look like? Well, the patient, could they be altered? They could be, okay. But most common with a, with a cocaine overdose, that's going to be dilated pupils, and very, very high heart rate, tachycardia, right, okay? Now, we have bulging eyes, okay, so that's not dilated pupils, right? Altered mental, could be, but mm, usually it's more of a dilated pupil, tachycardia issue, okay? So we're gonna let that one sit. Opiate overdose, tachycardic, that doesn't make any sense, my friends. Opiate patients are going to be, for example, respiratory depression, bradycardic, hypotension, bringing the patient down, not up. So we're going to cross off opiate overdose. Okay, we'll consider cocaine. Let's continue. Now, could it be a psychiatric crisis? It could be, right? But what about Graves' disease? Here's the question. Did you study this chapter? Did you study content over questions? Because this question is extremely easy if you understand Graves' disease. If you did not go over Graves' disease, you're gonna have no idea, and you're probably getting this question wrong, and you're either gonna go with A or C. 
This is a trap when you don't study content on NREMT. The answer is grave disease, and this is clear cut due to bulging eyes, AMS, and tachycardia. There it is. I've put together something very special for you, especially if you're getting ready for NREMT. Whether you are an EMT, advanced EMT, or paramedic, I've personally helped thousands of students pass the NREMT, we call it on easy mode, by understanding content cold at a deep level. Now, my video study course you can see on the screen here, whether you're EMT, advanced EMT, or paramedic, I've put together my life's work of over 400 plus videos and access to our private student group. You can get access right now by clicking the link in the description. I'll give you a lifetime access. My friends, hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you there. Take care. Waste, don't waste any time. Don't, don't be hesitant and just do it because I know this program works. And I know it's, it got me to where I was, where it's been a year without school from EMT to, hey, I passed my test in 70 questions, like, go for it, you could do it. Like, do not hesitate and don't waste any time. People that don't know you, they need to, they need this program. This program is not a, a choice. To me, this program is a have to. Take uh, uh, thousands and thousands of pages in the books and you just narrow it down and just make everything simple to pass the registry. So uh, it's, it's, it's great content, man. I promise you it's worth it took this with three weeks left to go in my class and I just I'm not sure if I would have been able to pass my course or the NREMT first try without this course. The fact like when I was taking the, the national and I would read the question and I, I would be like whoa Evan literally just went over this in the car so it's it really it helps. I got to the point where I was just ready to spill all my knowledge onto this freaking test so I'm like you know what man just go ahead go for it open it up Boom, congratulations, you passed. It was um, outside of having my children, man, it's probably the, more like the happiest day of my life, bro, to be honest with you.